There's a new Dragon Ball Sparking Zero trailer coming out very soon according to these new scans, but until then, these scans have given us 11 new confirmed characters and one of them completely breaks every prediction, including my own. At first I was gonna wait for that trailer to come out before making a video on this, but then Shonen Games posted the scan translation, which includes descriptions of new game mechanics, and I've been thinking what these new reveals mean for the entire roster all weekend long, so I, I can't wait no longer, man. I gotta talk about these reveals. First of all, the new trailer that's gonna come out is focused on speed versus power. I like how their trailers are thematic like this. The previous trailer, if you remember, was about rivals, and it revealed a bunch of different Gokus and Vegetas. In fact, that's something that the scan also acknowledges, with Vegeta alone adding 13 characters and Goku adding 11. And although the scan doesn't say it, I will. Uh, it adds 13 and 11 characters so far. If you count the number of Gokus and Vegetas they have revealed, yes, those numbers check out. But we're obviously still missing Ultra Instinct and maybe even UI Sign. And Vegeta might also get Super Saiyan blue evolved, so there's that. I do expect more Gokus and Vegetas to be announced before this game releases. But that's the first big reveal of these scans that character types will be a thing in Sparking Zero, and I think Tenkaichi already had something like this, even if it wasn't explicit, but you definitely already had stronger and slower characters versus the quick ones. Maybe this time they're just outright telling you in the character select screen, there might even be a little icon next to each character telling you what type they are. With speed types, you may not be as strong or durable, but all your actions are lightning fast. You'll be able to move for longer periods thanks to your low key consumption. Power types, on the other hand, severely burn through energy with key attacks and movement, but hold high offense power and destructive special attacks. We'll look at the character reveals for each type in a second, but to recap, here's what I think this means. Power types will have more damage and health, but spend a lot of key doing different actions, which includes movement. And speed types have low key consumption, but they can do all the stuff that power types can do for longer or much more often. They just do less damage and have less health in general. And since we're on mechanics, they talk about three different actions that you can do in this game. I promise you this will be the last thing before we talk about the character reveals. We got Revenge Counter, Assault Vanish, and there's no way that's the name of this mechanic. I'm calling it Super Reflect. I think we've seen all three of these mechanics in the announcement trailer alone. Revenge Counter, I think it's just this. The old school Tenkaichi Vanish on Vanish system. Assault Vanish, I'm not entirely sure. They say it's a mid-range option to close in on your opponents. So you vanish, but not defensively. You do it to approach. The closest I found was this, but I think that might just be a super dash towards the opponent's back, which Tenkaichi also had. And then Super Reflect is where you can reflect actual super attacks. This was a mechanic back in Ranging Blast, but not in Tenkaichi. In Tenkaichi, you could deflect Key Blasts, but not supers. Thanks for your patience, though. Here are the character reveals. The scan reveals 11 new characters and has a little description for each one of them, as well as their ultimate attack, or at least that looks like their ultimate could just be a super, I guess. And one of these characters completely breaks every prediction I've seen so far. Starting with the power characters, we have Super Saiyan Full Power Broly, the form that was obviously missing is finally confirmed. Gigantic Catastrophe seems to be his ultimate, and the description of the character doesn't tell us much, just that he's got wide ranged attacks. Mappa has Volcano Explosion, and he has two skills that can enhance his attacks, probably some damage buffs, let's say one for his melee damage, another one for his key damage, I don't know, I'm speculating, but he's got two skills that enhance his attacks for sure. Topo has Justice Tornado, sounds like the Pride Troopers will have something similar to the Ginyu Force back in Tenkai where they can power up after striking a pose. I think that's pretty cool. Kale Super Saiyan Berserk is also making it in. Kale is one of those characters that I'm not sure how many of her forms will be playable in this, but Berserk is definitely one that I expected. The description seems to hint at her health being bigger than normal, so we'll see. Super Trunks makes a comeback from Tenkaichi 2. He's got Super Explosive Wave as a super, but the description is a bit generic, doesn't tell us much in my opinion, so we'll move on to the next character, which is the last one here on the power side, Max Power Master Roshi. I think this means it's buff Roshi, we could still get base Roshi just like in Tenkaichi 3, start with base Roshi, transform into max power, and of course he has the max power Kamehameha as expected, plus has a skill that can temporarily buff his attack as well as his defense. Six new characters on the power side, let's quickly check out the five new characters on the speed section. First up is Hit, who has time prison. He's got high speed rush attacks as well as time skip. Though we don't know exactly how time skip works in this game, we'll have to wait and see. Jice has the purple comet attack as his ultimate, and sounds like he's gonna be a ranged specialist with long range key attacks. We also have Burner, whose ultimate technique seems to be the space mac attack, and he has after image technique, which if you've played Tenkaichi 3, you know that's a very strong skill. It makes it impossible for you to get hit for a while, I wonder if they'll keep it just as broken as it was. This bow has justice kick, and it sounds like he can activate super maximum light speed mode, maybe that's one of his skills that he can activate. I'd like to remind everyone that Kaioken, for instance, for base Goku, that's a skill, that's not a transformation, so this could be something similar here. And finally, the one character that broke every prediction, 
Kakunsa. She's a part of the Maiden Squadron from Universe 2. She focuses on close combat, and I have yet to see a single prediction that included her. Now, if we got this reveal before we had the roster screen, I think everyone would have gone nuts. Including a character like Kakunsa really means that everyone is going to be playable. But now we know that it's not everyone. It's 164 characters, so who's getting cut. And this is what I've been thinking about and obsessing all weekend. We'll definitely know more once they show the trailer, if they ended like last time and they show us the character placements. But for now, let's use my roster prediction placements as a guideline. This is my entire prediction right here. Let's start by fading out the characters I predicted that haven't been confirmed yet. Now let's confirm the locked characters in green. And now let's add the new characters that were just announced. I'm gonna put Kakunsa outside the roster because I didn't actually predict her. But as you can see, everyone else is here. So the question now is, where does Kakunsa go? And it's not so simple. I think she would probably go somewhere around here on the bottom right next to Ribrian. The problem is she is trapped between the Broly movie and the Goku Black arc. And those are not easy to move around. Of course, there's always the possibility that instead of splitting the roster screen in arcs like this, they simply make this entire section Dragon Ball Super without any further subdivisions. That gives us a bit more freedom and makes it easier to do some cuts. But even then, I don't think I can cut anyone that I predicted from Dragon Ball Super to add Kakunsa. She is just not that important. Every character that's in this prediction, I think has made a bigger impact than she did. And it gets worse. If she is making it in, I think it's to assume that a few other characters will too. We might see Basil and Lavender next to Bergamo. We might see more Universe 2 characters like Rosie or any of these guys. I didn't even include Frost in my prediction. I simply ran out of space. That was probably the hardest cut I had to make. But if we think that all of these characters are making it, if we have such a big focus on these minor Tournament of Power players, and we assume that Dragon Ball Super is restricted to this right side of the screen, which is what the organization seems to suggest, then I think the entirety of Dragon Ball Superhero is getting cut. I've thought about this a lot, and I'm either wrong about the arc placement, the organization of the roster screen, or Superhero is not going to be in the base game. They will save it for DLC. And that just extra convinces me that Dragon Ball GT is also going to be DLC. I did predict some GT characters, but I immediately said that this would be the space for Dragon Ball Daima in my final prediction. But since Daima isn't out yet, it's hard to predict which characters will make it, so I just fill the space with Dragon Ball GT. Now, Superhero getting cut from the base roster is not the worst thing in the world. I think there's a silver lining to this. If you make Superhero a part of the base game, then characters like Kakunsa, Basil, Lavender, they have no chance of making it in. Are you going to make those characters DLC in the future? I don't know, because those DLC packs probably wouldn't sell very well. On the other hand, a superhero DLC pack will sell like crazy. I do think you have to save some characters for DLC in order to keep this game alive for a long time. DLC helps fund the game support, it helps give everyone new balance patches and updates. Even if you choose to not buy the DLC, you can still benefit from all of those free updates. And if they do it like this, we will eventually have a game with everyone. But if they chose to release the game with superhero in the base game, I don't think someone like Kakunsa would would ever be DLC. It's a much harder sell. So in the long term, I think this is a better move for sure. We're just gonna miss Superhero at launch. This is of course all speculation on my part, but it does seem like the easiest way to include characters like this to me. I honestly don't know who else they would cut, or they just lied about the roster placements and it's all random. Regardless, I don't think we get to be angry no matter what their choices are, because at the end of the day, it's 164 characters. The biggest roster of all time for a Dragon Ball game at launch. So unless they do something outrageous like Gohan is not playable, then I am nothing but thankful. And we'll definitely know more once the trailer is released. I do expect it to come out sometime this week. We'll have more questions answered if they show us the character placements. I hope they keep doing that because that's what made this roster speculation so much fun than it usually is. And if you want to know more about that, here's my initial prediction where I go through the placements and go through all the hints that they have revealed so far and that gives us a pretty good idea of what the roster looks like. Thank you so much for watching. Boy.